I'm excited about the Linea. Secret server? Yeah. Johnny, you found a hard-coded key for verifying tokens. And so you could reach this API and basically dump the secrets out of this. What I was kind of a little shocked by was we see all these dates and it's like 212. He reaches out to cert to coordinate responsible disclosure with Delinea. The next week, cert says Delinea hasn't responded. Next week, cert says Delinea hasn't responded. And two weeks later, still, you know, Delinea hasn't responded. Finally, cert, you know, extends their disclosure deadline out to two months after it's been reported. And they disclose it on 410. On April 12th, Delinea does acknowledge the finding. It's one of those places where the full disclosure is what ends up getting the vendor to respond and, and offer some protection potentially to their customers. And that is always interesting, I think, generally to see how long it really takes to remediate this stuff. They might give you uh, uh, a data point that's helpful in choosing what you're going to, you know, what you're going to buy for your org. So apparently CISA has released a next gen analysis system. I, I got to say, okay, it looks like it's for malware analysis. It's their internal tool that they use, and now they've published it. But I got to just take issue with calling something next gen at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously, we're still calling things next gen? What What does it do that's next gen? You can remember Star Trek next gen. Like, that That was awesome. Like, high tech right. and everything. It seems like it's just government provided virus total. Like, it's like CISA total, basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, which is kind of cool, I guess. I think this is them like tenuously having stuff where you can do that malware analysis in a, a lockdown environment, but then also opening that up to a little bit of input from like the public. I guess I need to tell my customers, I always tell them not to submit to virus total. Should I also tell them not to submit to malware NG or whatever we're calling this thing? Let's talk about the EPA getting hacked. Let's go. CISA informed hackread.com that the data was already publicly available. Are you saying that a black hat hacker would go on the internet and tell lies and try to sell something that was already publicly available? Because I that I find that hard to believe. This is USDOD, who that name rings a bell on breach forums. So I'm guessing it's black hat. And yep, there you go. There's the breach forum screenshot. USDOD is a breach forums user that did breach the InfraGuard site. So this is like a pretty well-known user, which is probably why it picked up in the news. But I will say, having spent a lot of time on these forums, 90% of the data is repackaged from somewhere else, or maybe more than 90%. It's just like public data. People are like, oh, it has zip codes and addresses. It must be private and breached. It's like, no, turns out this was just required for the government to display who all their vendors are, right? I will say the main one that's kind of sketch is the staff, right? The, all the names and job titles of all the people who work at all these companies is just unnecessary to expose, probably. Yeah, maybe this will drive some change. I feel like net neutrality is coming back. The vote's coming up. These rules were set up for, what, during the Obama administration? They were instated during Obama and they were repealed during Trump. Gotcha. Okay. I pay 30 bucks a month extra to not have a data cap. Otherwise, it's two terabytes a month. That data cap is not allowed if you if you have net neutrality. Net neutrality is it also encompasses legislation regarding running your own equipment inside of your home. ISPs don't even really want you to have that access anymore. They want to just do... Because they, they want to harvest your DNS data. Yeah, it, totally. exactly. <laughs> they want yeah. all of it. They've arrested a San Fernando Valley man on charges, alleging a scheme to market and sell malware that gave the malware purchasers control over victim computers. If you bought this, you would receive Hive Rat to protected computers. He would transmit to the computer, gain authorized control over the computer, and browse files, record keystrokes. So it's like uh, log me in, but you get it from a guy in an alleyway, <laughs> and um, you can get arrested for distributing it. If I wrote log me in and I was selling it to people myself, could I be prosecuted for selling malware? I think it's all about intent. And actually, Cyber Now Education actually just posted that in the Discord that the last clause in Section 1030A5A uh, <laughs> has the words intent to cause damage. None of us are lawyers, but, you know, we like to play, <laughs> play them on podcasts occasionally, you know. Indeed. Uh, glong, glong. And sometimes we might actually give you better advice than your lawyer if the matter is about malware. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Join us for live InfoSec news every Monday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Black Hills InfoSec YouTube channel.